Hello and welcome, on this episode of Retronator Pixel Art News we're gonna look at Silver Grapple, Sonic Mania and we're gonna go to events like Gamescom, look at a lot of ton of pixel art and tutorials and stuff like that, see you in the show. Welcome to last month today in pixel art. I'm your host Matei Retroyan. How do you like my uh, my shirt? It's disaster piece. Let's get right into it. We're gonna start with upcoming games. So Gamescom happened. Indies were very well represented there with the Indie Arena booth. There's a lot of games that were showcased on this show floor. Here we're just gonna look at a couple of them. Aegis Defenders is an action platformer strategy RPG. You play as a team of ruin hunters searching for the one thing that can save their village, a legendary weapon known as Aegis. We've seen Fox and Forest, which was a game funded on Kickstarter with over 100,000 euros, and they finally released a demo for the backers and for press. So this is a really cool mechanic where the character can just switch seasons around to affect gameplay. So this was Gamescom. Next up, we're gonna look at a couple crowdfunding games. The Iron Note is a turn-based tactical RPG that is set in a dark fantasy world. Every decision made carries weight and can have a minor or major influence on your characters and the world that surrounds them. So if role-playing game things, fighting and guild creating is your thing, definitely do check it out. One more news from Kickstarter is of a game that has been funded way ago. It's called Steel Assault. So Steel Assault is a game that started as an NES game, but at one point they went out with more of a 16-bit SNES style in the end, and now they finally came out with a video of the first level, six minutes of footage, which you're watching right now. All right, that's still a solve. Moving on from games that might be released somewhere in the future, we're looking at the games that will be released in September. Songbringer was pretty much supposed to be shown in the new releases, but because I'm making this as a news show about August, this technically is an upcoming game. I talked to the developer at Game Developers Conference, super cool guy, he's doing everything himself, he's doing coding, he learned pixel art just for this game. So yeah, this release is out today, just go check it out and play it. Another game I played at the Game Developers Conference was Fugal, which I tried in VR, and holy shit, this was amazing. It's a perfectly voxel art game, and so when the bird turns around, it's actually re-voxelizes to fit that shape. It's amazing. It's, it's called a meditative bird flying game. It comes out on September 14th. You know which game is also coming out on September 14th? Yes, it's Kingdom New Lands coming to Nintendo Switch. Now, this is a little bit of a twist because what we were supposed to get to Switch was Kingdom Two Crowns. However, they switched around a little bit. Now they're saying only New Lands is gonna come to Switch right now, and Kingdom Two Crowns is actually gonna be a standalone bigger version. It's kind of like if they made Kingdom 2 Crowns into Kingdom 2 Crowns, if you, get, if you get what I mean. That's it for soon to be released upcoming games, whatever. Um, now let's take a look what you can actually just enjoy playing right now. Let's get into it. New releases. All right. Super Samurai Rampage is a small, simple, high score chaser that's bloody retro and challenging. It's a mobile game that just saw the release on Steam and has really beautiful graphics, all that uh, Cartoon Network Samurai Jack vibe. It's available only for Windows, but it's also only $2. Speaking of stabbing Samurai swords into bodies, Nidhogg 2 has finally come out. Very positive reviews came out for Windows and Mac for $15. Of course, Nidhogg 1 was a very kind of indie favorite fighting game. Now, finally, Nidhogg 2 came out and everyone's raving about it and loves it. We have more updates for fighting games. There's Rivals of Ether. Ether? Aether? God, I should not be doing a live show when I have no idea how to pronounce things. English, not my first language, okay? New DLC for Rivals of Aether called Ori and Sane. The Ori Rival DLC comes with the tag team fighters Ori and Sane, as well as the Spirit 3 stage. The DLC costs $5 for your favorite indie fighting platformer. The sequel to popular Prison Break game, The Escapist, comes out cross-platform on Windows and Mac for $20. So what do we do in The Escapist 2? Craft, steal, brawl and escape. It's time to bust out of the toughest prisons in the world as you return to the life of an inmate in The Escapist 2, now with multiplayer. Tiny Rails is also a conversion from mobile. Your grandfather has handed down the train company and it's up to you to expand your modest locomotive into a multi-car masterpiece. It is available for Mac and Windows for $10. Speaking of cute games, let's look at Magic Cat, because it's a magic cat combined. Magic Cat is a side-scrolling platformer inspired by the retro games from 16-bit era. Oh yes, it has positive reviews, it's available for Windows and Mac for $8. Another game about an animal is called Fox Folk. 
Fox Folk is a game about family. Survive as the head of a small family of foxes unprepared for winter. Oh my god, that's so sad. Hunt for small animals, weather blizzards, and gather firewood. All while trying to understand your small place in the world. It only costs $3, unfortunately it's just available for Windows. And now to the games that you can kind of play already, but you can't really because they're not out yet, but you can because their demos are out. Rising Dusk is a puzzle platformer like I've never seen before. The unique mechanic is that the more coins you collect, the less platforms you can jump on. So this means that you'll have to restrain your kleptomanic urge and plan the path ahead. So the game sadly wasn't funded on Kickstarter, but part of their Kickstarter, they released a demo already, so you can just go and take Take a look and play it and I promise you there will be a weird foot trying to crush you in it. Oh hey guys, look, more foxes. Uh, Furwind is a light-hearted platformer with a very classic approach. The game takes place in a magical world inhabited by intelligent animals. Shit, ain't that a uh, thing for a scary horror movie? Demo is finally available. You can play the demo and it's probably just for Windows. Spread the word, I'm spreading the word guys, thank you, you're welcome. Out of the demo and onto retro gaming, we're gonna start with rescuing Orc. How far would you go to help a friend when your best friend Orc didn't show up for tea after a couple of weeks? It was pretty clear something had happened to him. Let's leave those dirty Commodore 64 games behind and talk about ZX Spectrum. A ZX Spectrum game that we are lucky to play is Circuitry for the ZX Spectrum 48K and 128K. Look, I played it. It's super smooth. The gameplay, it's, I'm like, I'm amazed that there's some graphical machine code prowess in there. And now we're gonna go into the games of the month. You've seen a lot of stuff so far, but you haven't seen the best yet. And first of all, we're gonna start with Sonic Mania. How can we not? So Sonic Mania is an all-new adventure with Sonic Tails and Knuckles, full of unique bosses, rolling 2D landscapes, and fun, classic gameplay. We all love this game. It's a good game. It came out on Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, Xbox One. It was also supposed to come on PC, but it got delayed for two weeks. And when it finally did come out, the players surprisingly discovered that it was riddled with the DRM component called Denuvo, and then a lot of people weren't even able to play offline because of it. It's a good game, but look at these reviews. They pretty much bombed the whole Steam page with just downvotes because nobody fucking loves DRM. Why can't they learn something from Indies? Why are they afraid of Big Sonic or whatever, Sega? Just, you fucked up. If you like Sonic, it's a great game. Buy it on any, every other platform than here, unless you don't have anything else but here then sure. Another game that came out in August that I really love is Code 7. To be specific, Episode 1 of Code 7 came out. It's basically like being tank or other operators in the Matrix where you're hacking the environments for the team to get through. Episode 0 of the game was free to begin with, so head over to Steam and just play it to get into the game's world. And if you decide to stay in, it's $17 to continue with Episode 1. Next game is very dear to my heart. It's Silver Grapple, a fast-paced platformer that has you swinging through the air at the speed of sound. Run, jump and fling your way through the ruins of an abandoned laboratory as you master the physics of the silver grappling hook. The developer of this game is a sole developer that's been developing it for the last five years. He's the moderator of Pixel Dailies. But I'm gonna be honest with you guys, okay, this game is super hard, it makes you want to rage on your keyboard. But then, just when you get it, in like your 20th try, you feel more badass than Spider-Man on steroids. It's only available for Windows and it costs $15. Holy crap, that was a lot of games that came out in August. I can't even... Whatever, uh, let's uh, let's move on. Speaking of moving on, we're gonna talk about Chiptune. It's a pixel art show, but Chiptune goes well with pixel art. So good, like bread and butter and all that good stuff that go well together. Chiptunes equals win. Volume 6 is finally out. You'll find many different flavors in Volume 6, so it's also a great introduction to the scene and a way to find artists that you like, and then you, of course, go listen to their own full albums. Moving on with random bits of news. The next ZX Spectrum computer just got one bit extra in their graphics capabilities. They decided to put one extra bit and out of 8 bit go to 9 bit so that each of their RGB channels can have 3 bits per it. So it's 9 bit and 2 to the 9th gives you 512 colors. And that's a random bit of news. <laughs> that's the stupidest uh, piece of news I've ever done. In other random news, low res jam happened in the first two weeks of August. People were tasked at building 64x64 64 64 pixel games. 235 games were submitted. Here we have Legend of Xenia 2, T-Taste Better on the Moon, Reload Quickly Now, Ping Pong Jam, Demon Simon. You can play all of these video games up on this itch.io page. Moving on into the pixel art section, where we look at illustrations that are not just in video games. Ironically, first of all, we're gonna give a shout out to a voxel artist. Zexorce is one of the best voxel artists out there. To me, this is pixel art in 3D. It's just as cute. You can see more of Zach's stuff on his website and you should definitely follow him on Twitter 
at Y2BCrazy, also known as I picked my Twitter username when I was in high school. I'm just kidding, Zach Sorry is a super cool guy. Shout out of the month to his voxel art. Moving on to actual pixel art, uh, we're gonna look at DeviantArt's artworks because I follow a lot of artists on DeviantArt and I favorite a lot of them and then I make a feature of the ones that I favorited. So you can check out feature time number six of DeviantArt. You can see some of them here. Next up, we're gonna look at Patreon Watch. Tavi Navarro posts his scene 42. Goodness gracious, look at this beauty. Paul Robertson showed us throughout the month of August how he made the cover for Invader Zim. That's why we love Paul Robertson. Next up, Kirokaze, most prolific pixel artist I know out there. We have four new artworks, Windy Day, Fallen Soldier, Lava Stage, and Last Land. Then we have Nem, he does all this cool pixel art, like weekly drawing number 19. I'm really not supposed to have favorites, but my really favorite artist on Patreon is Veilard Andrei Ljapice. He has Twitch streams and I hang out there and sometimes he says hello Retronator, welcome to the stream. It's so, it's so nice, it's amazing. Veilard's artworks for August are Relaxation, Eclipse, because of the Eclipse. These were all Pixel Daily teams, he loves to do Pixel Dailies. And another Pixel Daily team which was GUI, so he's done a little bit of a dashboard. A newcomer to Patreon is Fully Fully, the sealed patron which is, as she admits, going to be forever a joke because she's on Patreon and we are her patrons. So she just came on Patreon in this month, so all of the stuff is new and look at this party, people. RHL is back to Patreon after a small little hiatus and posts the start of a new webcomic that she's writing about pirates. Becca Bear posted this cool illustration of Pozniak. Also, did you know eBoy is on Patreon as well? In one of their latest news, they just started offering their San Francisco digital wall wallpaper at 5K resolution. If you didn't know, their little pixelramas can be bought as wallpapers and they have these blue parts around it so that you can place little icons around and it looks pretty cool. And so that's eBoy, the grandfathers, godfathers, whatever pixel art for you. An event called Chaos Constructions took place in St. Petersburg. Here are some new works that came out from the ZX Spectrum community in Russia and other places where they submitted work. Look at these beauties. Uh, I say other places because I also submitted one online from this one right here, from uh, the internet, how it thinks this works. The last place we're gonna look at for new art is Pixel Join. So right now it's August, we just received top pixel artworks for July 2017. Here we have obligatory RPG remake from Doppelganger, uh, which was done for one of the weekly teams on Pixel Joint where you had to take an old work of yours, in particular this one for him, and remade it uh, to your new skills. Zombie Pirate, Lechug, by Jin, STS-133 by the one and only Orange Magic, Cool Burb by Copper Nume, 2017 style characters by CNG Motek, second place, and the first place goes to Esper Terra by Vagrant. This is all the cool pixel art I can show you in this short amount of time. If you are missing something, I definitely am. Please let me know. I'm at Retronator. Let me know of cool artists that are missing. Uh, we're gonna close today's show with a section I call Do It Yourself, which is for all of you who want to do pixel art as well. First of all, one small and one big thing for me. The small one is this little small paint over of how you can do embroidery in pixel art for somebody that was asking on Reddit which is you pretty much just use the third uh, overlaid on top of your pixel art. And a big thing for me is I have released a draft of my Pixel Art Academy study guide, which is kind of lo-fi prototype of all the content that's gonna be in Pixel Art Academy. And it also has this huge section, which is called the Tome of Knowledge, that has all the possible tutorials and knowledge on the internet grouped together into these articles on artwork, tools, process, line art, rendering, references, all these good stuff. So yeah, the study guide is becoming a huge resource and kind of a little small preview into the activities of Pixel Art Academy. You can find the link on my Patreon, which I will link to at the very end, because I'm also new on Patreon as well. Speaking of Patreon, a lot of cool tutorials and resources always come out from Saint-11, also known as Pedro Medeiros, and this month we got five tutorials from him. We got a tutorial about environmental hazards, tutorial about clouds, shading, an animation process for making quadruped walks, and finally another one on the fundamentals, it's outlines. Another cool person on Patreon is Mort Mort. He made a basic tutorial about AC Pride. Cast Pixel released her Ludum Dara 39 game and wrote a huge post about how to make a bullet hell shmup in three days. From tutorials we go on to pixel art resources, so these are things that you can use if you're trying to make your own video games. Final Boss Blues released his beach style set and like the jungle set from before it's free and you can get it on itch.io. One more resource on Patreon comes from Justin Game Design who is creating pixel art indie games and sprite art studies and he released a Game Maker tile template uh, where you can use it to paint over all of your stuff and you know how it's everything's arranged. Last but very far from least, 
is the pixelation or tools resources and linkage thread. It's pretty much your one stop for all of the pixel art related things, the list of tools that pixel art is. So if anyone asks, oh, what tools can you use? Here's a list. And if you look into my study guide, I even made a little answering chart which might help you decide which one of those to arrive to. There's game engines, utilities that you can use. There's a link of all the tutorials, art references, video game references, fonts, communities, pixelized, eye goodness, candies, wendies, spendies, jobs, everything. It's the ultimate thing. Tools, resources, and linkage. Second thing that I also posted that comes from actually CNGMO, it's his The Ultimate Pixel Art Business Guide, which I would say is for both the pe people that do pixel art and want to do it as freelancers and for game developers that are hiring pixel artists. It's a really big collection of knowledge. He even goes into details as how animation frame counts affect the budgets and how it's not the same if you just budget for an 8 frame game and then decide, oh, we should go to 16 frame and you have to redo all the in-betweens. Anyway, stuff like that. Definitely worth a read if you're doing this professionally. We're almost at the end of the show, guys. If you're watching this, maybe you need some ideas what to do on the weekend. First of all, Pixel Joint always has a weekly challenge going on, and right now the Pixel Art Challenge is Crime Scene Investigation. Also, don't forget, if you are a game developer working on a game with Pixel Art, Screenshot Saturday is happening. And if weekly challenges wouldn't be enough, of course, we also have Pixel Dailies on Twitter, where every day you get a new team. I can't predict the future, so I don't know what it'll be, but what I can do is give you an archive where you can see the previous days organized by the number of favorites Look at this, hashtag relaxing. Oh, look at this, hashtag kitchen. Hashtag calendar of all of the works in 2017. Look at all this stuff that happened in August. This cool isometric house by Verbeat, like this guy is nuts, incredible. They also had a Sonic Mania hashtag. There was even a whole week of just Game of Thrones things to Pixel. Anyway, that was our show. Pixel Art Retronator News Episode 2. It's done. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you want to see more videos. Share it with your friends. Look at all this cool pixel art stuff. And yeah, if you really like it right now, I am also on Patreon. If you want to just follow me, you can just click follow. All of my posts are public. But if you decide to support me, it's super much. Thank you so, 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 so much. Thank you for watching this episode of Pixel Art Retro News. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.